And everyone who knows you knows That you can't resist Lying for the money Going all like Collecting, staging, paparazzi chasing Scamming, selling the garbage that you're telling We don't care You're only winning it in your dreams Going all like Victim branding, petty and demanding Phony trifles, peddling your titles We don't care Heard enough whining from the spare oh, You'll never be royals Dignity isn't in your blood The kind of Sussex ain't for us You're ruining everything you touch Couldn't be the rulers Of so much as the Burger King Baby, yeah, ooh, ooh. Could see that you're no majesty Welcome to Popcorn Palace. I was muted. I'm Andy Signor with my crown today and our queen, Steph the Alter Nerd. How are you doing, Lady Steph? Uh, I'm not doing too bad, Lord Andy. How are you doing, mate? Oh, I cannot complain. Welcome to the palace today. All right, we got a lot to go through. Uh, it's Friday. That means we're here live with you on Popcorn Palace, which we're trying to do every Friday because it's a little bit more fun. Royal talk specifically for you live. Uh, we missed our video yesterday. Apologies. I just messed up and I, a lot was going on. If you weren't following over on the other channel. Yeah, I guess we're uh, looking into looking into this exploratory legal fund with Netflix and the Depp v. Heard documentary. And I just have to react because we're live again. Holy crap, Steph. Look at that. Oh man, it's, it, it went past 8,000. <clears> I'm just floored. I got pretty emotional last night as we were seeing all the support coming in. Uh, I don't want to get all spend too much time on this again because we're trying to move forward. But uh, guys, thank you. Thank you. For those that don't know, yes, I will put the link in there. You guys can check it out. Netflix uh, documentary was made by this production company that basically used a lot, Steph, of our footage. Um, and uh, yeah, it just frustrated me. And so I'm happy to report that we now have counsel. Uh, and we announced that yesterday on our live over on planet and we will be pursuing uh, what we can do I, again I'm not trying to vilify anybody <clears throat> I'm annoyed at the production company because they know they didn't have production they, they didn't have the clearance they know they didn't because they reached out and didn't get it and uh, yeah it, it's been nuts so in order to do it though right Steph we needed to get legal counsel and we needed to raise up at least phase one of legal exploratory funding so we can figure out what are our options and the fact that we were, were almost at our deadline, uh, hopefully we get over. I, this is just important because it's going to show Netflix that we have the support of the community because this is a big company. There's a big channel for this production company, Netflix, all of them. I want them to know that they got to take this seriously and they don't just got to sort of shrug us off because I want to have, you know, we, we, there should be respect, right, Steph? So um, the fact that you guys stepped up and we're already past 8,000, my goodness, goodness gracious. Thank you guys. If you want to help support throughout the show, you still can. Um, it's in my link tree at the top link as well, which is pinned. Thank you to everybody who's been spreading the word, sharing the word. Oh my gosh. So grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we were a little busy yesterday as I was dealing with lawyers and conversations and things. So apologies. I missed our palace video. We have one for you today, which is this live and we're going to have a lot of fun and it's a doozy. All right, Steph, we're going to go through Steph made a whole document here. She's gone through. I have it right. You can see it right here. Uh, all the lies. All of has his lies, Steph. How, you want to set this up? Well, what, what are your thoughts on this? The the two big ones, all right, because if we went through all of Hazard's lies on Heart of Invictus, uh, we'd probably be here all day. But <laughs> I've essentially, yeah, I've essentially gone through the two main ones that I thought were absolutely egregious. Um, the, the first one is that the media didn't cover uh, British soldiers being wounded uh, in Afghanistan. And the second one where he's turning around and saying that he didn't get any support when he got back from Afghanistan, uh, which was, to me, a clear swipe at the British royal family yet again. So they're the two biggies that we're going to be going through today on this live. And... Uh, yeah, some of it is actually from Hazard's mouth himself from years ago. Like, mm -hmm. he actually debunks himself, guys. It's hilarious. So, Andy, take it away. <laughs> 
Well, all right, let's get through the document. So um, getting, sorry, here's the first link. As we go through this, Prince Harry claims the media did not cover British soldiers, soldiers being wounded in Afghanistan as he discussed his press coverage of his deployment in the documentary. Uh, he talks about coming home, right, and, and the fact that they weren't. I only saw what people talked about. There was no there. That was the real trigger to see the real cost of war, not just those individuals, but also those families and how their lives would change forever. Stepping off the plane, I was angry at what happened to these guys. I was angry at the media what weren't covering it. But at that point, it wasn't clear to me what needed to be done. Uh, was what he sort of put out there, and this is now uh, rightfully so upset a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is it, am I going in the right order? It's this next yeah, link? Yeah, yeah, just go yeah, in okay, the order. Sure yeah, I mean, whatever order, it doesn't really matter. This is The all Millies, just now what are they, Steph? Hmm? So the Millies are what? Um, so the Millies are like a annual TV award event, uh, for veterans, uh, and wounded veterans as well. And it was literally created by the media, by the sun, right? Um, and... Prince Hazza attended, as you can see in this picture here. He's awarding one of the military veterans. Um, so again, with, they with did not award. cover the British soldiers being wounded, but here is a literal event that was promoting and lifting up all the wounded warriors. Yes, and all and all the soldiers that had been to Afghanistan and whatever. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I know. Also right? similar to what he's trying to do with Hard Invictus, celebrate a wounded. Yeah, interesting. Okay, but. But yeah, they didn't do it. All right, here's another one. Uh, let's go to The Sun, which we know we hate The Sun, but wow, we care, Harry. Prince Harry's claim media didn't about the war soldiers brand offensive a string of ex-war heroes. Uh, and yeah, I saw this. They did a whole cover story. Pierce Morgan, Morgan called this out too. The, the, even The Sun was like, dude, we've covered this in great detail. I don't, I don't see the headline. I wanted to see the headline. I think Pierce has it better. The, the, I mean, as, as you find in that, the sun also launched the help for heroes campaign that to this day has raised over to my knowledge, I think over 350 million pounds. Okay. Which is well over, I think in American money, $400 million, right. Over the years. And it's help for heroes, for, you know, the, the veterans, the wounded, everything, right? And he's turning around and saying that the media didn't do anything at all. It's yeah, here it was. Nuts. We there did care, go, Harry. Yeah. We still do. Prince claims in here that they're showing some of their old headlines of what it was. Uh, their Help Our Heroes Foundation. Powerful front page rebuttal to Harry's shameful new lies about the British media. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they were like, this is nonsense. We, we did report on the wounded Brits. Um, and, and furthermore, as I'm looking at Pierce, here's another one that's coming in, uh, hero, Ben, I had your back for 15 years, but Harry, you're wrong. Also this other, uh, individual coming forward, calling has a out. And this is a guy who's close to Harry who has said he still likes him. He appreciates what the Invictus games did, but calling out that he didn't like that there wasn't support and there wasn't coverage. He's like, that's, a, that's not true. Yeah. So it's just interesting. Even his own colleagues are coming out to call out yeah. this lie of this sort of flippant thing he says to, again, victimize himself, because that's all that Harry can do is go. <laughs> that's all he knows how to do. No, and, I mean, uh, we're, just, we're, now, we're now getting on to the articles where, you know, it's been a little bit more specific in terms of, you know, here's one uh, from 2007, and it's literally about the British injured in the Afghanistan war. You see it there, like clear as freaking day, the media reported on this. Now, I remember when this all started, um, I was starting around about my first year at university um, studying for my degree. My degree being in international relations and security studies, you know, the Afghan-Iraq war was absolutely, you know, a, a big thing um, for the course that I was taking at university. And so I was looking at the papers every single day to, you know, make sure I was up to date on the latest news and, you know, where, where everything was geopolitically. And every day it was relentless. There was always something that was being reported about the soldiers, um, the politicians, everything. So again, for Hazard to turn around and say the British media did nothing, didn't report on it at all, is absolute lies. Now, let me be very clear, whether he did it intentionally or not, 
hey, that's for you guys to decide, right? But the clear lies nonetheless, as we're showing you these receipts. And it's just another way, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, because Boozy Theory or whatever, for Hazza to peddle this insane bloody narrative that the UK British media is evil. I mean, they've got it's got its problems, like all medias in each country, of course, but no, it's not evil, 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 evil. But it play, it plays into his narrative to turn around and say they never reported on it. It's we, it's weird. He just he does he often does this right where he just thinks he knows the the facts when he he doesn't. Um, and yeah, you you've shared you have a much more British wounded dead Afghan month by month. There's there's a lot of these reports Showing here. Showing data. Um, yep. The next one is GQ magazine, um, and I gave you a couple of paragraphs for you to focus on. So just control F to find them. But this is from GQ, right? Uh, again, part of the British media. And, you know, they actually go into a couple of these stories about the British uh, soldiers being wounded and, and what happened to them. Uh, and they chronicle these two surgeons that are treating uh, two people here, uh, Ken Bellringer uh, and Corporal Malton Thomas, uh, who stepped on an IED. Uh, Corporal Malton Thomas, he tragically died. I think Ken Bellringer was a um, warrant officer. Yeah, warrant officer. Um, and so it goes into detail in terms of that, you know, he lost both his legs above the knee, um, extensively damaged both his ha hands and arms, suffered a shattered pelvis, uh, including the loss of both of his YouTube human of we're going to call him balls. Um, so Is that it, better? <laughs> Who knows these days? Well, I'm talking worse. about footballs. <laughs> Go away, YouTube human re reviewer. But, oh. yeah, it, it really, really goes into detail, this article, about specific soldiers that have unfortunately had life-changing injuries because of the war. But again, Hazza would like you to believe that this was never reported in the British media at all. At all. But then if we get on to the next one, all right, you might be thinking, well, maybe he thought we, he, he was thinking about like visual, like TV, that kind of thing. Not like the traditional newspapers and magazines. Maybe he's thinking about, you know, TV, that kind of media. Whoa, let me show you exhibits B and C. Um, so B, the, B, C. <laughs> the BBC. Oh, yeah. Um uh, so the BBC, for those that don't know, uh, main, main, main TV channel in the UK. And yeah, they were broadcasting soldiers being fatally wounded in Afghanistan. Uh, it was a new documentary uh, that was basically, it was all very uncensored, a very, very much down to earth kind of look at what these soldiers were going through and what was happening when they were getting wounded. Um, and then the um, other one, um, the link right at the end. Why is that showing up? It's not that one. No, not that one. Just scroll up, honey. Scroll up. Scroll up. That's it. BBC One Programme Wounded. Oh, there we go. Sorry. What they also did as well, the BBC, was a two-part documentary, which was about an hour and a half long, uh, following two injured soldiers. Um, surviving the injuries is just the beginning. So it was like, okay, what happened? Not only were, you know, our TV media showing the soldiers and what they were going through and how they were unfortunately getting injured in the war zone, but it, we were also showing in the media, TV media, what was happening when they got home and how they were surviving and how they were overcoming things. So. Yeah. This, in terms of the research I've done here, it, I think it's very comprehensive in the sense of Prince Hazard is completely wrong, false, and lying, whether intentionally or not. Again, that's up to you to decide. When he turns around and says that the British media didn't mention anything at all, no reports on the wounded for our British soldiers. It was extensive, not only in print, but in audiovisual as well. So he can get a cactus, shove it with chili oil, and shove it up his backside. <laughs> well, and then so point two, which we're about to get to, is what, Steph? So 
Point two is where he's turning around and he's saying that when he got um, home, he to. had no support whatsoever when it came to his mental health situation. Um, that he, he, I'm paraphrasing here, but what I deduce is he suffered a breakdown when he got home from Afghanistan, not because of what he went through in Afghanistan. The trigger more was the death of his mother, Princess Diana, which... I can understand, fair enough. But he has said for years that he bottled it all up. And at that point, it all came out, right? He's saying he got no support whatsoever. Well, I've got evidence here where Prince Hazard is debunking Prince Hazard. <laughs> so this was the idea, right, that he didn't have support when he returned from Afghanistan. We've alluded to this, but now we have clips to really hammer it harder. Oh, Curled yeah. up on the floor in a fetal position as Meghan Markle makes fleeting appearances. So let's go through it. So here's one. We have this clip, I guess. Unit with, with all of the soldiers as well. Um, so and taking on a lot of their... 523. So there's um, a link just on the right in this video. Under... That's where I went. No, go back to the... I went um... to this one first. Yeah, I know. Go back to the page. I'm at the page. No, the other page. The there's this map. one, this one, this one, this order. That one, yeah. On the right in this video. I mean, do you have experience with mental health there issues or... Yeah, I mean, I've, I think I've, especially over this, uh, this the beginning of this campaign and previously, I think if anybody looked at uh, my life, I can't speak for the other two, obviously, um, you know, they, they, they've got their own reasons. But for me specifically, if you look at back to the fact that I lost my mum at the age of 12 mm -hmm. in the, in, on, on the on the sort of public platform of, of, of which it was, and then... God, I thought like this was like a new thing he's doing, but Steph, I, I keep finding more. He he says the story over and over and over and over for years. Everything else that happens of being in the spotlight and this sort of role and the pressures that come with it, um, and then going to Afghanistan, and then and then having to not having to, but then working in the personal recovery unit with with all of the soldiers as well, um, and taking on a lot of their issues. Anybody would look at that and go, okay. There must be something wrong with you. You can't be. You can't be totally normal. There must be something yeah. wrong. And I, I, I sort of buried my head in the sand for many, many years. And some people have written about it and suggested that you know, there might be something wrong with me, and it might be Afghanistan related. I can safely say it's not Afghanistan related. Um, I'm not one of those guys that has had to, you know, see my my best mate blowing up next to mm -hmm. me and have to apply a tourniquet to both their legs. Luckily, you know, thank God, I, I wasn't one of those people. But I can safely say that losing my mum at the age of 12 and therefore shutting down all of my emotions for the last 20 years has had a, a, a quite serious effect on on not only my personal life, but also my work as well. And it was only three... What the fuck does this have to do with veterans, Steph? Right. <laughs> Are you serious, dude? But and he's admitting gone. he didn't see any actual service. That's a very damning clip because exactly. So mm -hmm. we'll go to the next clip. Um, so um, there, just to explain, he was in the personal recovery unit, so he got support there, and he actually said that, you know, people went up to him and said, you need help. So there was that support unit there. absolutely. freaking um, Yeah, and, again, and to be clear, I'm not saying he doesn't have a shock from the loss of his mom. Absolutely, he clearly no. is still messed up from the loss of his mom. I'm not doubting that in the slightest. <clears throat> he's just clearly not well. And this c constant using that as an excuse to connect himself with the other veterans who have had their limbs blown off and, and whatnot. And, and what, it's just, it's a different thing. And it's just odd how he keeps trying to clear it. And, and it's very telling that he also reveals that he didn't actually see any dramatic bloody, uh, you know, thing here. So here's the next clip. Should we play this one? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I have been psychologically affected by what I've seen. Did you, for example, were you offered psychological support when you came back from Afghanistan? Um, the army, the army, uh, put you through a, a day, two day course on the way back through Cyprus, which is, um, which is, I mean, crucial for everybody. Um, there everybody you go. has a different role. Um, I've, I know my, I always take my hat off to the infantry and snipers because that really is, that's when you're, you're at the forefront of it. And, you know, God forbid some of these stories that you hear guys are, you know, with bayonets and everything, which is, which is, is brutal. But I think, you know what I, I just I described it to someone uh, uh, ages ago as um, as one of those sort of slideshows yeah, that you go can through pause your it mind. Now. Everything just, that if you've got a good imagination as well, everything that you see, especially if it's um, anyway, yeah, he's going on and on, but it's it's interesting because exactly, yep, I got the treatment, but again, he's trying to play that there was no treatment. This yeah. one's really telling. This is the one with with his 
uh, with his brother. Here we go. Yeah. It's always sold as though everybody else's life is perfect. Yeah. That's the problem. And therefore you think if that, oh, you know, everyone else's life is perfect, there must be something wrong with me. You know, if you can have a family environment where you can talk openly about your issues, that makes for a better family, better preparation, probably working better at a job, doing better at school, every da -da 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 -da, you know, so it just goes on and on and on. Because you often speak, don't you, about the emotional changes that sort of even yeah. you've gone through. And I think a lot of parents hopefully can, I suppose, identify with that, yeah. in that, you know, having a child, particularly your first child, is such a sort of life-changing moment. Nothing can really prepare you for that. I remember the first few days with little George, you know, you have no idea really what you're doing, no matter how many books you read, nothing yeah. can prepare you well, for it. There's no rule book, there's no like, training that teaches you how to do it. You just have to learn from previous generations and hope that you can translate it into what you know what you want to do. You remember up in Anglesey, so we'd had a yeah. couple of weeks of sort of family support and then you were keen to get back to, to your work and I was like, no, I'll come with you, of course, yeah. So we scooted off True. back to Anglesey with George. Those first few weeks, you know, were... Steep learning curve. Yeah, steep learning curve yeah. massively. You know, when you have children, it really does put your own emotions and your own life into perspective and it's been very very interesting understanding you know why i get so upset about some things or why some things affect me you know i thought i was quite you know fairly sort of straight down the line but i'm actually quite uh, you know uh, i feel quite a lot more than i used to do you feel that particularly with the work that with um with the air ambulance do you feel yeah I, I i feel like i take on a lot of the family cases with me I take them home which i, I find quite hard um, and luckily we've got a good support network at work and just talking about it amongst all of us and being able to you know understand the process and, and and hear you know good news and bad news but but follow some yeah. of these cases through to to the end is quite important and it's not just the individual is it it has such an effect such an effect on the rest of the family precisely family friends everyone that cares about you so you've got that one individual in the middle yeah. and then no one really especially with the, the veterans piece as well all the focus always seems to be on the individual with the injuries exactly um, yeah. if it's physical injuries then it's supposedly easier because you can see those injuries where if it's yeah. hidden wounds then no one can see that but still that person is the focus but the effect that i mean my god what a support system he's got with these two who are there openly talking about it's just this is a telling right. clip because i have never really seen william right and catherine like open up like this and yet here they were opening up with harry talking about emotions talking about support systems what the hell is he complaining about steph the 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 bigger ironic thing is that the heads together campaign is something that, that all three actually created together and it was about promoting a uh, more open discourse on mental health and how prince has is turning around and is like on heart of invictus yeah i had no support whatsoever what he had all the support in the freaking world you know what it is i, I think it's sort of like when you you put something in your mind and maybe you're embarrassed or whatever, but then you let it re and then others help sort of reinforce, reinforce it for you. And I think this victim mentality really is, has come from Megan. His family is evil. They have not supported him. And that sort of has now gotten ingrained and ingrained over the years due to Megan's own insecurities and issues with her, whatever seeming family that she's rejecting, even though they seem to be fully supportive of her as well. Right. But it's like another case study of where she's now rejecting them because they turned, even though, it sounds like her mom's the one left when she was a kid and left her father to raise her, which she did well, put her through college, took, you know, took care of her. And now suddenly he's a scumbag because there was some, you know, he's older, didn't know how to handle the media stuff that happened. Um, it's just weird. I, I sense that. Do you get what I'm saying, though? It sense, feels to me like there's an imprint from his now relationship with Megan to taint all this and to relive it in a way in his mind of as a victim, right? As they were the problem. No one helped me. And he's losing focus of what actually happened <laughs> and, and the access and things that he had, which uh, he's got to remember there's clips and evidence and testimonials that are going to prove that he's full of crap. It's revisionist history. And I hate it when that happens because yep. no, what happened has happened. Here's the evidence to show that he did have the support network, not only from the army, but from the royal family as well. Because again, maybe, you know, you might hear what Prince Azza said and you might be thinking, oh, well, he may have got support from the army, but not from his royal family or vice versa. Well, here, no, 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 no. He got support from both. So you can't square that circle at all. 
he lied. Again, whether intentionally or not, again, you guys can decide on that. But he lied all the same. And it absolutely knocks me off, particularly the media lie, because by extension, he's turning around and saying, well, because the, the media didn't report on it, therefore, by extension, the British public weren't bothered and the wounded soldiers and hearing about them. No, we were. <laughs> we, we, we raised hundreds of millions just in the Help for Heroes alone with that Sun campaign. We all put in. I've still got my Help for Heroes bracelet in my bedroom and the badge and everything. Still keep on to that stuff. I can't bear to throw it away now. Not happening. Again, it's this narrative that the, the UK media is evil, the UK uh, public's evil. No! Get Ben. Get a cactus lace it with chili oil and shove it up your backside. Because we've just shown the receipts to show, to prove. That ain't the case. It's false. You are lying. It annoys the shiz out of me. The way that he's trying to frame this. And yet again, right? We're talking about Heart of Invictus here. What? Who are we talking about? We're talking about Hazard and Megzi, right? But hang on a minute. Ain't Out of Invictus supposed to be about the six that they were following uh, on their journey to the Invictus Games of 2022? That's what the focus should be all about. Instead, he's turned it into the Hazard and slightly Megzi show. When you watch that series, the first two, three episodes is mainly all him. Why? He goes, when per me, I didn't get any support. When me mum, when the UK British press is evil. Where, where, where? Shut the hell up. We would have had enough. Slay. This clip, this clip's really damning to me. And I guess this really? is this is the part you. This is the part you were queuing, so let's watch a little bit more. That has, and them, their family and their friends, is huge because people care about you. Yeah. But that is part of the healing process and it's right. part of sharing your problems to halve them and to make them better with someone you trust and someone you know is going to help you. Yeah. Both of us have always been open to each other, saying, you know, we've, we've, never, we've never really talked about it. We've never really talked about um, losing a mum at such a young age. And when you speak to other people's families and little kids and stuff, you think, wow, you know, I, I don't want them to have to go through the same thing. So you want to, with, ex with a little bit of experience, you want to help as much as you can and try and empower them to have that conversation and to be brave enough for themselves to talk about it at a young age rather than bottling it up for, for far too long. Considering everything that you boys obviously sadly went through and the trauma that you experienced, you know, I do, particularly with the work within early intervention and things like that that I've been doing in the early years, mm. I do think it's incredible how strong and how you've been able to to cope really and i put that down to your really early years childhood experience mm. but also the relationship that you've got you're amazing oh, it's just so sad seeing this now yes you know most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it's it, you know and some families sadly aren't as lucky as, as no, you guys have been just, and yeah. being able to share but, things but we have been brought closer because of the circumstances as well that's the thing yeah. you know you are you can tell William's so much more guarded and him opening up like this is so telling because it's clearly Harry who wants to just blab about all his feelings, which it is what it is. But to see William and Catherine here doing it with him is so eye-opening to me and re changes this narrative that Harry's painting with Meghan about how evil his family is, about their lack of emotions and listening. You know, uniquely um, bonded because of what we've been through. Yeah. But, you know, even Harry and I, over the years, I've not talked enough about uh, you know, our mother. You know, we've, no, we've never enough. We've Has doing this bit, campaign but... sort of made you realise that? To yeah, I, I, th I, I think so. I always thought to myself, you know, what's the point in bringing up the past? What's the point in bringing up something that's only going to make you sad? It ain't going to change it. It ain't going to bring her back. And when you start thinking like that, it can be really damaging. And you always said to me, you said, you know, you've got to sit down and think about those memories. But for me, it was like, don't want to think about it. Yeah, but it's, I think it, what must was happen with us and must happen with others as well is that you have to prioritize, you know, prioritize your mental health. Yeah. You have to say to yourself um, at some point, because it's very easy to run away from it, you know, yeah. to walk away from it and avoid it the whole time. You know, someone has to take the lead and has to be brave enough to, to force that conversation. This coming Sunday, the London Marathon yeah. is, is the... Is, is but Hazel would like you to believe that he had no support whatsoever, guys. None, zero, zilch. Who the... Break. 
Yeah, it, I mean, look, this clip was this clip blew my mind a bit because it's it it goes against the picture that Harry's painting now in Spare, which I do believe is inflamed by Meghan, right, Steph? Like, yeah. and you go back and you think about it because now I, I, there's nothing else I can think. We have to digest it all. But you go back and see how Megan treated her own family. It's so related. It's so related. And as even I've sort of come to know now Thomas and Samantha and what they've gone through and their anger, I, I, I get it, right? The way that, that Megan suddenly turned on them and treated them given the whirlwind they were thrusted into. And she just cut them off. Like, psh, to, to be able to do that to your own family, he's now doing the same thing. And she's hel- it's just it's it's hard to deny that there's that's, those two things aren't related. You know what I mean? She clearly is just cutting it all off. Um, and uh, when you see him with his family doing this, basically, you know, doing the things that he's trying to do with Megan now and his, his all his, his, this is clearly something Harry is passionate about is mental health and helping others. Like, I do believe that. Right. And his brother and sister-in-law were down. These, they, they were there doing it. They here's William revealing what do you think his mom details their part, their mental health struggles to help others with this group you're saying they made fascinating and he had it all. And then now suddenly they're racist. Sorry. What is it? Unconsciously biased. Unconscious biased. <laughs> <laughs> and, Oh, they don't like my girlfriend, my wife now. Oh, da, 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 da. let me deal all these secrets out. It's, it's, it's sad, man. It's sad to see that he had such a strong connection with the brother. And it does make me sad because you realize these two went through sh- that is hell, man. And I know the whole world did when we lost Diana. It's it's even more impactful, right? Because the world knows their mom better than they do in some ways, right? Because they were so young. It is such a sad, traumatic thing that everyone was rooting for these two always. Yeah. I, I, nobody hated Harry and William as kids. Like they were Ameri- you know, even here in America, we were all just those images, man. They're unforgettable. And so the, all this energy and support and love for these two and for him to just to everybody is just so sad. But then it's like, could it all be because of this anger and his issue? Yeah, clearly. Um, but Megan's, I don't like it there. They don't like me is, has only made it harder for him. I think to really do the work he needs to do, which is with this, with his family and to pull away from his family is where things have gotten so sad. And this, now Invictus Games nonsense to use, that he's doing to distract himself and bring him back to the good old days, to me is only unearthing the biggest lie, which is that he isn't the family guy and he's turned on them all. So yeah, this this show was a big uh, L in my opinion. I think he really messed up releasing this. And it's if anything, it seems like the backlash is starting to take its toll as now there's rumors, right? We talked about it yesterday. Rumors that the invest the organizations themselves want less involvement from Harry and Meghan because they're distracting from what the issues really are about. Um, you feel that way too, right? They, they, did you think he's going to step down? Do you think he has the wherewithal to notice that this is not helping either, or is he just so clueless he'll never do anything right like that? I don't think he'll ever do anything like that. He's clueless, absolutely freaking clueless. Um, I think he's that full of himself that he thinks that he's actually helping the cause in the Evictus games, rather than, in my opinion, harming it, both him and Megzi. And let's be clear here, uh, Megzi's a big part of why, you know, his fam- his fa- uh, family relations are destroyed, absolutely. But he also takes equal responsibility and blame for that as well. Um, you know, Megzi may have talked in his ear, but he's the one that ultimately cut them off because only he could do that, right? He still has that freedom of choice and he made it. Um, it's no wonder in terms of Megzi's side of things because um, her last marriage with Trevor Engelson, you know how she ended that one, Andy? How? She FedExed her wedding ring back to him. That was it? Yeah. Didn't even like there wasn't even a conversation. He just no. FedEx it back. Wow. Yeah. It's all you need to know. Really. Well, it's so it's also <laughs> sad because you you realize William gives this warning. They're like, "Whoa, well, you're fans of Suits. You're you learn they liked Meghan Markle. They were fans of Suits. They're like, oh, exciting. No way, no effing way. Like your bro- brother would. Like, yeah, you go, boy. What an awesome. You got this right. amazing American actress. And he's like, yeah, I'm in love. And he's like, slow down. Was the feedback and 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 Harry's reaction is. <gasps> 
how dare you? What do you mean? Which only made him then speed up and didn't listen to his brother's wise advice because it's clearly like, be careful, bro. This is not some, you know, Kate Catherine's proven, right? She comes from a wealthy family. She's an elegance. Like she knows the role, right? And she knows what she's getting into. And you can tell they have a lot in common in that regard. And Megan has none of that, had none of that. And only wanted the, it, it's clearly the attention, the acting, the, the Instagram followers. It's so clear. And so it's so sad that he got so lost in it and uh, that he can't see through it. But it's it's becoming clear and clear, Steph. I can see it. I Because I, there's a lot of like, well, stop piling on Megan. But she really got herself in this mess and her lies have created a web now that now Harry is getting stuck in these lies, which is just unfortunate because I want to root for Harry and William. Don't you in, the, in your core admit it, Steph? Don't you wish these two brothers could make amends and kick Megan to the curb? And right all the wrongs would in your if there was a way to it was isn't that what you'd ultimately want? To right the wrongs, yeah. Repair his relationship with the family, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's his family, it's his flesh and blood. At the end of the day, of course. However, he will never get back into the good graces of the British public. He is done. When he comes back to the UK, and my, my words, it's going to happen uh, when he and Megsy divorce. He is going to be treated like Prince Andrew. He's there. Mm. We're aware of his existence, but they're going to sweep him under the carpet. They're going to let him live at Frogmore Cottage, sweep him under the carpet, and that's it. He won't be part of any of the main events or anything like that. Done. Because he's done too much damage. Way, 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 way too much damage. Um, and too many uh, insults and um, offences to us as the British public. Again, to our culture and identity in terms of everything that he's done. He's disrespected it way too much. No, it's true. Once you start giving up the secrets, which he did in the book and the show, it really is like, what, what can I tell you at this point, bro? Because you're going to go tell it all over. Um, I don't think he realizes what he did. Like once you write that tell all biography, unless you've told the people you care about what you're going to tell and they've, they've given you the blessing, right? Which sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're like, I'm writing the biography stuff. I'm going to reveal stuff. Are you prepared? Here's what I'm doing. And most, you know, people who do that can write that with respect and get the end. Everyone understands that that's fair. Go do it. I know what, it, what I'm in for. Go for it. Right. But this wasn't at all sanctioned by anybody. This was just, I'm going to get all this gossip off my chest, which he did for money. Let's keep it a buck, right? Yeah. He did. He admitted it on Oprah. He is doing all this because he has to pay for security for his kids because Megan made him leave, <laughs> right? It's like, it, it's, it, there's no, we're not like, we're not creating a fake narrative here. Like that's what he's, he's dug it himself. And you're right. The more I look at it, while I have some empathy for him more than I do Megan, to be honest, because I just, I don't believe for a second she didn't know what she was getting into. Um, I do think just Harry's pussy whipped. <laughs> He's just, I don't know what it, it's like relationship whipped. He's just, he doesn't, uh, like Johnny was in a way with Amber. You know what I mean? Like I just, there's a part of that where it's like, he, I don't, I, he does not, he's not being able to see through the clouds of what's actually going on. And now he has kids, which makes things so much more complicated because I have no doubt they both love their kids. I do believe they have kids. Uh, and that complicates things. Um, and so, yeah, it's a mess, man. It's a mess for Henry as everyone calls him. <laughs> he is, um, he's only going, I think, realize or start to realize the extent of the damage that he's done, not only to himself, but the British people and his country um, when uh, he gets divorced from Megzi and he moves out. That's when I think he'll start to realize the damage and the offense um, that he has caused to us, his countrymen. We're his home. We're his countrymen. He's he he was at he was. I'm saying was he was our prince, right? He was part of the royal family, part of our British identity. We were proud of him. We loved him. And he's done all this since he left the royal family. I will not realize the damage he has done to us, the pain he has caused to us. Until he gets divorced from Megzi. Until that happens. (sighs) 
yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just say another story. That's, I don't know if that's truly breaking, but yikes. <laughs> Should we save that? <laughs> Check that out as I look. All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Petra said, for your support here. Yvonne B., Rachel Fox, Harry should appear at the end to thank the vets. Yeah, he should have. He, look, I, under, I, I don't have a problem with him being involved in Invictus Games. He just needs to be less involved. And the problem with the Netflix show is it makes him very involved. Um, he is one of the founding partners. He is a prince. People know who he is. He served, whether people agree he served well or whatever. As, as our, Paul, I was in the chat, and she opened my eyes in a stream that we're going to have over on the Sean Atwood channel. I guess it's tomorrow night. Um, we talked about it in great detail because I, I still try to give Harry respect for serving, but Paula enlightened me on what actually <laughs> happened. And uh, yeah, it's much more complicated than even I thought. But um, that said, I don't have a problem with him being involved in these Invictus games. He just has to make it about the vets, not himself. Ruth Single, thank you so much. And then Mama One, I think Andy is right. He pushed everyone aside. Megzi comes in, pushes the victim narrative on him, supporting him. Now he believes that's true. You're told you're a victim long enough. You end up believing it. Thank you for saying it better than I was eloquently trying to say it. But exactly. She sniffed that out. She knew. Oh, yeah, I'm going to keep telling you you're the victim. They sh they shat on you. Your family wasn't supportive. And it happens in therapy, too. It, it, sadly, if you have a bad therapist, they can just get in your head and say your family sucks. And sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. And sometimes they don't, maybe. Uh, and then it's easy to blame them. So you got to be careful. Um, it's easy to make to, to change a narrative in someone's brain to then just blame others and blame the family for issues. But the thing you got to learn in therapy uh, is if you're if you have a fucked up family, usually they did, too. <laughs> it always, usually comes in cycles. So while, you know, you're ignored by your your mom or whatever, probably your mom was ignored, too. Right. You don't know where they came from. Where did their trauma come from? That's really where a good therapy and sessions and stuff you'll learn is just like, Oh, and it'll open more of your mind to be like, Oh, I shouldn't be mad at them. Sure. I may be fucked up because of them, but they were fucked up too. Wow. I didn't realize that. Right. There's it's, it's complicated. And Harry's not seeing that right now. He's just blaming playing victim and blaming whoever he can. And so is Megan. And the reality is they're not seemingly have decent enough mental health experience and experts to help them realize it's greater than just that. Um, that it, life's complicated, everyone's human, and everyone's got their own demons to bear and why some of that might have come from, and it may not be their fault. Um, but yeah, Mama One, I, I, that well said. Lulu's mom, Harry used has used that crutch for years. We've all lost parents. He uses it always to point attention his way. Um, yeah, I, I can't deny that. It's it's That is his identity. We can't deny that either. He's known for being Diana's kids who has no longer with us. It, it's, it's brutal. Paula M. Good to see you. Thank you for the three bucks. And Wancho just came in. Steph, while I agree, Harry will be shunned if he returns. I don't think he'll be treated as bad as Andrew. Harry's a sellout, but Andrew is scum. Uh, uh, Prince Harry is a sellout, but he's also scum as well, just in a different way. And with Prince Andrew, um, Rumors, yes, proved no. So even though he is scum in the sense of he really did put the crown in danger, the royal family in danger, uh, in terms of, you know, being f affiliated, at the very least, friends with a freaking monster um, and, and, and all that lot, in terms of the allegations against Prince Andrew, again, innocent until proven guilty, and he's never been proven guilty. So, is he scum? Yeah. Scum in the sense of what people think of when they think of Prince Andrew. I would say hold your horses on that one. Because the the uh, person making the allegations, and we'll call her, uh, we'll just say Virginia, right? Uh, Yeah, she is dodgy AF, guys. Like, look into her. She is dodgy AF. Uh, she is not innocent in any of this, guys. And it's very, very telling when you've got other survivors of that monster, we'll call him Hefe, have turned around and said, uh, she ain't no to do with us. She freaking recruited us. Yeah, she ain't innocent in all this, guys. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit more nuanced than people would want to admit when it comes to Prince Andrew. 
Yeah, I still think he's scum. <laughs> anybody oh, that close, scum. Anybody Absolutely. that close to uh, Jeffy to me is not someone I want to hang out with. That guilt by association, I know, is unfair at times, but in that one, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I'll accept, and that's just my own bias. I'll own it, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to give Andrew a pass just because maybe that girl wasn't always being up front. They can both be bad. <laughs> they can both be bad. <laughs> it's the sad. But reality. again, let me be clear. I'm not giving him a pass because at the end of the day, like I said, regardless. Um, if he's innocent or not, let's say, he still put the crown in jeopardy. He yeah. still put the royal mm -hmm. family in jeopardy, in real danger, guys. And that interview and that's with no what's joke. her name? That oh. interview, that was brutal. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. Jesus. Did Shouldn't him no happened. favors. Shouldn't have happened at all. Shouldn't have happened at all. Um, that would be a fun Popcorn Palace live someday. When we when it, when it we have a slow one, let's revisit the Prince Andrew interview. Oof. Yeah, we can do that. Oof. But again, I think, the, there's, there's, I think there's a there was a movie that was being written about the... Still is, still happening. Is it happening? About the interview or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obvious, for obvious reasons, it's on hold at the moment. But yeah, it's, it's happening. Yeah, 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 totally. That'd be a fascinating movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Mama one also said, can you get Mexi Megzi's ex hubby on interview him, get the inside scoop on who she really is. That would be all my, uh, amazing. Yeah. Steph put it on our list of dream gets. I don't think that he's, he, I am assuming at this point, the Royals probably would have swooped in and given him a huge NDA to sign. Don't you think? Let's put it this way. Uh, Trevor Engelson has not spoken out at all about, his marriage with Megzi um, since she entered the royal family. He has stayed extremely quiet. I can only assume, yeah, there's an NDA on this. But I don't think she can afford that. But it, at the point where she became Prince Harry's, you know, significant other, I would think the royal family have enough control and power yes. that someone showed up to his house like, correct. here's a boatload of money, sign this NDA. We never want you to hear talk. You're not allowed to talk about her. Yeah. And then probably once he signed, they're like, okay. They probably did that to like 10 people in her circle, if we're being honest. <laughs> yeah. And the fact of the matter is like when you read Tom Bauer's book, uh, Revenge, he chronicles a bit with, you know, her marriage with Trevor Engelson. He, in all honesty, even if there was no NDA, I'd be surprised if he wanted to actually speak out anyway. Um I have this kind of feeling that he's just happy to get rid, leave it in the past, not dredge it up because he's happy now. By all accounts, he's remarried. Um, he's got a new life, better life. He just wants to leave it all behind anyway. It'd be pretty scummy. I got to be honest. I mean, unless there's something really he needs to feel like he needs to tell the world because it's because she's a phony and it, there's a standing up to it, right? But if he just comes out and just talks crap about her, I, I don't know. I find that ex-boyfriend or ex it's like the whole jonah hill thing that girl looks psychotic like absolutely psychotic the way she's misleading the text and the more you look into it she was asking him for the lists that everyone is giving jonah hill shit for and jonah hill did seem a little crazy himself don't don't get me wrong but the more you look into that story you're like oh wait this girl's got serious issues mm -hmm. um and she was just jaded and bitter and I, I just i think that's he he looks much better being the better person by not coming out there to torture, but I would watch the hell out of him if he did. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> I couldn't deny him the opportunity to speak if he wanted to speak, but I, I respect him also not. You know what I mean? I can see it mm -hmm. both ways. If anything, you know, I'll be very honest with you, just from like an ethical perspective, I wouldn't want him to speak out about his time with Megzi. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it'd, it'd be like what Harry did. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want him to do that. Um, and so, yeah, just from an ethical point of view, I think it's right for him to stay quiet with or without an NDA. Hmm, there you go. But you'd watch the hell of it if he did, right? Dude, I'll try and get him on this channel. 
at that yeah. point, like, all right, where are we going to go for it? Fine. You choose to do this, mate. All right. Floodgates are going to open. Here we go. I'd, I'd ask, get I'd like, are you sure? I would do the, are you sure? Oh, I would do. I've, yeah. I've done I'd that be before like, with are guests. You sure? Are you sure? But uh, no, I would not, if, I would if not mislead him or trick him. It, him but, but if he had something he needed to say, I'd love and, I, and he, I'd watch it and I'd I'd I I'd, I'd host him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I would agree cover with you. it. <laughs> I I agree with you. He he she he should be careful. Um, but yeah, good idea, Mama. Not Mama one. Um, anybody knows her. I'm sure there's a lot of people who've worked with her who have thoughts. I mean, I remember I we had that really good interview from I forget his name, Stephen. Uh, who had basically did a movie with Amber. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty explosive interview. And he came in and acknowledged, oh, yeah, she did drugs, blah, 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 blah. All the stuff that she was saying she didn't do. Now we had a character person who actually was in a movie with her who was able to, like, talk about it. And, and he was nervous, but he he ultimately he was really grateful he did it. Um, but I think we need more of those Megan types who are, like, can actually come forward. Or be nice. Like, I wish, I wish she, that's the thing that's so weird about her, right? If she really is the, the wronged and the victim, you'd think there'd be more people who'd be willing to go on the record to be like, this is bullshit. Leave her alone. Right. And I, I just, I don't see them. Um, yeah. Most of her friends stay out of it. And it does feel like she's, she's manipulating it all. It does feel that way. Well, yeah, I mean, again, referencing Tom Bauer's book, Revenge, um, he chronicles her time with the partnership she had with Reitman's, which is like a department store in Canada, I believe. And I think the first time she was filming with them, everything was all right, apparently, I think, if I remember rightly. But like when she was filming with them again, oh, my goodness, she was an absolute terror. Uh, she'd rewrite scripts. She would be extremely demanding. Uh, she took clothes away when she shouldn't have done like yeah she was a horror show uh for Reitman's in the end uh to the point where you know I think people were crying afterwards just from the sheer stress that she was causing everyone um and then take that to today's kind of where we are at the moment uh when Valentine Lowe in his book Courtiers he broke the story that uh she was bullying her staff uh Kensington Buckingham Palace and even earlier on this year uh, he came out saying you know that his sources are still maintaining this story that she is a bully she is nasty piece of work uh, to the point where she uh, bullied them that much that they had to be off work sick they had mental breakdowns because of her huh. she's a nasty piece of work she really really is by all accounts and I really do believe it Really do believe it. Well, uh, there we go. We've debunked Harry. We've talked about the Royals. We've speculated. We've done our, our due diligence, and I always enjoy hanging with you guys. If you have any other quick questions, send them on over before we wrap up because it is one and – hold on, one. Hold on. Do we have time? Do we have a King and Queen stream ready? Um, we don't have one ready, no. Um, I will need to change it, but we can do the Kings and Queen stream next week uh, because we do have the um, planet. Um, uh, no, next week will be tougher. Today. I'll, I'll have to do. I was realizing I might be able to sneak in some of it now, but uh, I won't be able to. I'll talk to you off. It's my pickup time with a Sawyer is tougher on these days, so I have to figure out how to adjust that because I can do this stream, but doing the extras when things get more complicated. But I. He, today I have a little bit more time, but it's fine. Let's reschedule it. We'll prep it better. We'll have a king and stream, king and queen stream soon. It should be after the show, though. Don't you agree? So we have to figure out when I could do it on a Friday. So yeah, we just one day where I can start after. earlier. We'll do that too. So all right, so stay tuned. We'll do. It. I, I thought maybe I could sneak it in for a bit, but let's do it right. Let's prep it. We'll be back. Yeah. In the meanwhile, as we uh, wind things down, if you have any other little support you want to send over, like General Scott, just did with the farting ginger doggy. Thank you, General <laughs> Scott. Always appreciate you and your support of Steph and us all. Um, and thank you to everybody who supported. My gosh, we, we I think we got another over $200 dropped in while we were airing today uh, on the legal fund. Thank you so much. Uh, it's amazing the support you guys have been showing. Thank you so much for helping us with that and everything. Steph, what's coming up on Steph the Alternerd? 
Um, so, uh, Steph the Alternate, more of your news on the gruesome twosome Hazard and Megzi. Uh, tomorrow, there's going to be a Steph Tea Party live. And I'm actually going to have guests on. Yes. Ooh, uh, I'm getting finally. used to now. Yeah, I know. I'm getting the confidence. I'm going to have guests on. So, yeah, we're going to have Paula M. Uh, we're going to have Sue. Um, Andy, I've invited you if you've got the time. If not, that's fair enough. I know weekends is family time for you, mate, so that's all right. Um, we may have Thomas Markle coming on, uh, Junior. Uh, he did say he'll uh, come on. So, yeah, we might have him on. And, yeah, just talk as a Megzi royal family. Have our cups of teas at the ready. And, yeah, have a good old-fashioned Steph's tea party. Uh, Ooh, Sunday. Not going to miss this, live folks. Sunday edition, the usual. And, yeah. Fun over the weekend. Fun over the weekend. If you haven't already, go sub. I assume you all have, but go do it. There it is. Go sub. Okay. Uh, do you want me to schedule the um, planet video? Oh, yeah. Actually, let's eight do minutes. it now. Give it. Let's do 115. 115. Done. I'll stall for. All right. Can you do 110? I can do 110. Let's do 110. 110 it is. I forgot before I send you all away, we're going to send you the premiere of the new video, which I forgot. So let's, let's hang for five more minutes and get the next. We have, so we have a good video guys. Mm. We do. Did Megan get fired from the Invictus games? <laughs> it looks it's like she clickbait. might have. And we got, we went through all the, uh, the evidence that we've, we've compiled and you're not going to miss that over on popcorn planet next. So let's set the alert in five minutes. We'll head on over there because it does look like, she was fired, potentially, from the Invictus Games. <laughs> oh, man, one can hope, right? One can hope. So as we Absolutely. hang out, we will hang out and get that ready as Steph is setting that up. I forgot we had that ready because that's a new thing. We try to premiere our... Um, uh, there we go. The thing that I find funny, Steph, is I see it now, and I'm so grateful because the fans, I don't have to call it out because the fans do, but I have a lot of people who are like, oh, God, Andy's grifting this again. Oh, why don't you just go after them yourselves? And it's just so funny. And it's, everyone's like, because I'm an adult. This is replies, right? They're like, because I'm an adult who wants to support what I want to support, and I believe in the cause, and power in numbers. Like, Netflix is a big behemoth. Like, clearly, it's better if they know there's a lot of people. It's just amazing. And I realized that these people and then the, the fans, you guys have been incredible in the support and stuff. Even the fans are like, I think these are just Amber stands pretending to be Johnny fans. And I'm realizing that's happening with sugars and with Johnny where they put a, a Johnny emoji or a, or a Megan emoji. And they're trying to, or a, what, some, what would it be the opposite? But you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're playing uh, uh, spies. It's so clear that's happening more and more online. And so guys, you can't let them get to you ever. They, these sugars are so dumb such a waste of energy and uh don't don't ever don't ever let them get to you and thanks everybody who's who just responds in, to these idiots <laughs> it's always very entertaining to me to see but i appreciate all you guys who have been supporting uh incredible support is still coming in there and support over to steph the alter nerd inherit coverage uh and uh more coming you're not going to miss her tea party today all right but we have the link now is it ready let me see. Yeah, it's all set up, set up as a premiere, set up as a redirect, uh, which there. we're starting in five minutes' time. There it is. Four minutes. We'll head on over. Is That's Meghan awesome. Markle fired from the Invictus Games? Ooh. 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 You know what? Tonight, I mean, tomorrow's going to be Steph's tea party, but tonight, I think I want to go on a date with myself again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are you going to do? I know that Oppenheimer's going to be showing. Uh, at You're going to see Oppenheimer cinema. again? Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Oh I God, know. Like I'm torture. obsessed with this movie. Go but see Equalizer 3, Steph. I could go see that, I suppose. Didn't you yeah, see the first? Like... I like that franchise. I like, I like the first two. Apparently, the third one's really, really good. Looking at the yeah, you don't have, you can go into movies to yourself. It's, a, it's, an, it's an important thing to do. Go on a date with myself. It's awesome. Yeah. I have a great time with myself. Uh, I go to cinemas. movies by myself all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I, th I think I'm going to go to cinemas again and have a little bit of a night off with Steph the Alton Nerd. I love have it. Well, there's time. some good movies out now. There's a, uh, yeah. Equalizer. What's the other one? Uh, Meg. Uh, Meg 2 looks Meg fun. Meg 2 is out. 
Uh, I wanted to see that. I didn't get to go. Expendables is coming. Which one? Expendables 4. Oh, it's coming. I thought Strays was funny. I mean, it's so dumb, but it was funny. Uh, and then what was the other one I liked? Um, oh, I liked, did you see Blue Beetle? Or you, you don't want to see it? Eh, I'm not interested. I was pleasantly surprised by Blue Beetle. Had a lot of heart. It was fun. He was good. Got a little intense at times. I liked it. Definitely at least worth watching at home if you don't go to the theaters, but I, I, a good support because I, I, I thought that was their way better than The Flash. I mean, Michael Keaton in The Flash was great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if you took that out, that movie's a mess. And uh, as a better movie, Blue Beetle uh, as an all-around movie is way better. Uh, but I'll tell you but, something, what's showing now over here, Sound of Freedom has finally come over to UK. Oh, wow. Making lots of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a it's it's a movie. It's good. Like it's it's overhyped. It's just the message is so important that you sort of get invested in the movie. You know what I mean? As a movie yeah. itself, it's fine. Like I wasn't offended. It was an important message. Um, but uh I got so annoyed by that call to action at the end. Mm. But yeah, I want to see um I want to see Equalizer. I tried they didn't give me a, a critic screening. I'm so weirded out. Denzel, whole cast, they can't promote the movie. You'd think you'd do extra screen screening to critics in all areas to make sure that at least people are talking about it. And they didn't even right. do that. It was fucking weird. And then meanwhile, the big news right now is that Taylor Swift just sold out uh, like her movies. She's going to have the biggest uh, pre-sale tickets ever for her new yeah. Eras Tour cinema experience. So good for her. I Man, know, she's, right? did you hear that? That was it was it She went around the studios. Her dad went around the studios. I read about it today in one of the trade emails I'm on. And they're so smart, Steph. The trade's like going to pay, but not, I mean, the studios like Disney Plus, Netflix, we're going to pay a little bit. They've bought some of our other concert films. But her dad and her realized, well, shit, the movies aren't in theaters. We don't need a studio. And they went straight to AMC Theaters, which is the biggest chain here. And they're like, hey, could you distribute it yourself? Could we just take the money and avoid the middleman of a studio? <laughs> and AMC's like, Hells yeah, because they don't even need the marketing. All Taylor Swift had to do is tweet it a couple times, and her fans are the market. They buy it, and they did. And so brilliant now move for theaters because the studios are like, well, wait a second. No, you need a studio. And they're like, no, we don't. <laughs> so well, it was a huge F until, you to the studios. One minute until, and I'm just looking, Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. Oh, But it's in 3D. That's what I don't I'm, like. Is it, uh, yeah, that's the only thing. I'm I was seeing. gonna go take my kids, but they hate 3D. I, I hate the 3D gimmick. I want to see it. It, it wasn't made. If it's not made for 3D, I don't want to see it in 3D. Yeah, I saw Jaws in 3D for the anniversary for that uh, last year, and it was pants. Yeah. So you know what? I don't. Those think I 3D see that. movies can, which is a bummer because I would love to support it. Ju re, uh, Jurassic Park is fucking amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. All right, do I have it, guys? What a show. Thank you for being here. We're going to head you over to Popcorn Planet. We're going to give you the premiere of our latest movie, our show. You're not going to miss this one. Was Megan fired? Go check it out. We're premiering it right now. It's about to start in a minute and a half. So head on over there. Here's the link in the chat. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are here live every Friday on Popcorn Palace. But please, if you can, go support our new movie, because uh, our new video over on Planet, uh, because... I don't know what's going on with the algorithm. Go support it. Let's go premiere it together. I'll be in the chat with you. Head on over. Also support Steph the Alter Nerd and all the other amazing things we do. Enjoy your weekend, Have everybody. You Bye! Never be warriors. Dignity isn't in your blood. The kind of Sussex ain't for us. You're ruining everything you touch. Couldn't be the rulers of so much as the Burger King. Baby, yeah. See that you're not